Hello there, friends. Welcome back. It's been quite a few months since we talked about watches at all here on the channel. So, I've put together a, a little show and tell for you today that I hope you'll enjoy and find relaxing. I've got two watches on the panel in front of me. One of them, this one on the right, you might recognize this is the watch from the very first video on this channel, the 1905 Illinois Watch Company, 17 Jewel Bun. We go back a ways with this watch. And on the left is a watch you will likely not recognize because it is new to me. This is the Meridian Argent by Yod. The, the folks at Yod contacted me recently asking if I wanted to host one of their YouTube giveaway contests here on the channel. And I was happy to hear from them, frankly, because I, uh, I don't get contacted about such things very often. And when I do, it's, it's with uh, products that, frankly, have very little um, resonance with the things we like here on uh, here at Gaslamp ASMR. And so I was happy to have the opportunity to be able to give you guys uh, something back uh, to help show my appreciation for your support these two and a half years or so. So, on that subject, there are a couple of pieces of information down in the description that I want to make sure you're aware of. The first is the link to the giveaway itself. And what that is, is the chance to win a hundred dollars off of anything at the Yod website. That includes men's and women's uh, watch designs. And if you were the winner of that hundred dollar discount, that would also include free sizing and free shipping of whatever you chose. That contest is only open for a couple of weeks. And if I'm not mistaken, there's a gift giving season around the corner. So if you uh, see anything in our show and tell today that piques your interest, 
or if you go to the Yod website and see anything there that you might like or that you know a friend of yours might like, I encourage you to enter the contest. You can look in the description below for the link and the end date of the contest. It'll be two weeks from the upload of this video. But also, besides that, you will see down below a instant discount code that you can use right now if you wanted to for $25 off anything at the site. That is independent of the $100 giveaway and that code will also be valid only for the next two weeks. So if uh, you'd like to take advantage of that, I encourage you to do so. Now, about this show and tell, like the, uh, the other times that we've talked about watches, we're going to kind of nerd out a bit. And we're going to handle this watch, and for comparison purposes, we're going to look at one or two things on the uh, Illinois as well. And we're going to do a bit of a deep dive on some of the design details of the Meridian that I enjoy, but um, a couple of caveats first. Um, please understand that I'm not trying to do a top-to-bottom product review of the Ode. There are much better, uh, much more knowledgeable and more complete watch YouTube channels out there that would do a much better job of something like that if you're researching uh, your next watch per, uh, purchase. I'm a fan of watches, as you know, but I'm not a collector and I'm not an expert and I'm not a watch historian, so I'm going to leave that to other people. But perhaps more importantly, um, I am not in this video trying to offer you a, a an opinion or a judgment about whether um, a a more fashion-oriented watch like this uh, might or might not be a good addition to your collection. And that's because I have no way of, of knowing what your careabouts are as a watch buyer. Everybody's interested in different things, and people are allowed to like what they like, so... It's not for me to offer that judgment here. This is just a uh, an excuse to kind of get nerdy on uh, another watch that we haven't seen before and kind of do a deep dive on uh, some of the some of the elements of it, which I hope you'll enjoy. But as with any purchase, uh, you should certainly do your research, and uh, and you should. Uh, follow what's important to you as a, uh, as a buyer or an enthusiast. So, okay. So I've picked up the, the yod here. We're going to get some nice close-up views of it. And first, let's just talk at a very high level about what we have here. What is this? Obviously, it's a, it's a watch. Um, and notably, uh, it uses wood elements in its 
design and construction. That's kind of the whole uh, point of Yod incorporating wood in their timepieces. It uses a mechanical movement. That means, of course, there's no battery. It, uh, uh, the timekeeping is powered by a mainspring, just like the 1905 Illinois. Uh, it has an automatic winding mechanism, which we can see through the display back of the case. This, this kind of rotor that flops around this center of rotation here uh, helps wind the mainspring. So as long as you're wearing it and moving around, this rotor will flop around and keep the mainspring wound. It's a 40-hour mainspring, and you can tell how wound it is by this little dial here. You can see it goes from 0 to 40. This little indicator is pointing at about the 10 right now, which indicates that it's about 25% wound. Now, I will confess that before I uh, started seeing some of these Yod uh, giveaway videos on uh, various YouTube channels, I was not that aware of companies using wood in watch construction. It's clearly a, a unique um, approach. It makes somewhat of a, a statement piece, I suppose. But when I first heard of it, I wasn't even sure what that meant. What, is, what does it mean to have wood in a watch? What what do they try to use the wood for versus, you know, what they still rely on more traditional elements for? So, as our first little deep dive, let's take a look at how the Meridian uses wood. Where it's used and how it's used. And I want to I focus more on the case, so I'm going to start with the link bracelet here. So what we can see is that this bracelet contains a series of wooden links. But we can also see at the center of each link there is a metal piece, like a, a bit of a spine that's metal. And that makes sense, because if something crazy happened and, you know, all of the pieces of wood in a particular link uh, broke suddenly for some reason, the watch wouldn't fall off of your wrist because it would still be held in place by the, by the metal part of that link. See, it uses a, uh, a butterfly clasp in the middle, and um, the the bracelet is sizable, as most bracelets are. This is, uses the pin and uh, the pin and collar fastening technique which you can resize yourself with the right tools, or you can take it to the local jeweler. But the case what does it mean to have wood in the case? Now, my 
degree is in uh, mechanical engineering. So if you tell me that you're going to use wood as part of a watch case, I get pretty interested because I'm very curious about how you're going to pull that off. So if we look at the Meridian case, we see several elements. If we start with the back or the bottom of the case, we see that there is a steel back plate that serves as the foundation of the case. And that back plate has a display back, so there's a glass window here. And then the steel back plate. And then we have a, a sandwich, a, a laminate of the two woods that are used in the meridian. That's zebra wood on the top, dark sandalwood on the bottom. You might have noticed, but that's the same two woods used in the bracelet as well. Zebra wood on the top, and that's the thicker piece, and then a small stripe of dark sandalwood on the bottom layer. So the, the wood composition carries through from the case to the bracelet. And then, moving to the top, we have this steel bezel, and we have the slightly domed sapphire crystal, so that we do get that slightly refractive uh, effect when you try to view through the crystal at a low angle. So we essentially have this stack of materials with steel at the bottom, wood in the middle, and then steel on top with the screw down bezel. I've also seen from a picture on the website that there is a metal band or perhaps a, a collar, you could call it, that sits down in the middle here that the movement sits in and I assume that collar has the threads that the screw down bezel uh, tightens into. I really enjoy the union of metal and wood in this case design. Not to mention it's just, I like the case lines. Um, you know, it is a fairly large case, um, as is a trend in uh, fashion watches these days. But I think they've done a great job at forming a union of the wood and the metal here. Another thing that I think really visually helps that uh, union is the color and design of this bezel. I'm a big fan of good bezel design in a watch. And with the, uh, the dark sandalwood and the zebra wood containing these stripes, these woods look good against black steel anyway, but having this bezel here on top of the case wall, it's just the cherry on top in terms of uh, kind of transitioning the eye from the organic wooden section of the case to the dial, which is, of course, all, you know, 
it's all technology and all man-made. The bezel is, is a perfect transition. I've seen wooden case designs where the, the whole bezel area is also wood, and to my eye, that kind of makes the, makes the dial present a little too woody and, and kind of chunky or clunky, a little awkward. There's nothing awkward about this design. It's just, I find it, I find it very elegant. And of course, if you take a closer look at the bezel itself, you'll see that it, it mimics a, uh, a sprocket or a gear wheel, which is perfect for a watch with a mechanical movement because there are plenty of gears inside this watch. But that brings me to the dial of the Meridian. And it's a very showy dial, but it's supposed to be, right? Because it is a, a fashion watch with a large case and a large dial. It's a statement piece, so it's, you know, supposed to really make a statement on your wrist. There's lots of things that I like about this dial. Uh, and I guess the most obvious and dynamic element is this, this whole dial design going on here in the lower half. You will notice that you can see the two balance wheels in this movement very plainly through these large holes that they have left in the dial design for the express purpose of looking down and seeing the balance wheels in action. So if you like mechanics, if you like behind the scenes type, you know, stuff, uh, being able to see the balance wheels from the front of the watch is, uh, is a really fun element. Normally watches, uh, you know, manual, or I'm sorry, automatic watches, normally they accomplish this from including a display back, but this particular movement was designed, designed so that, you know, most of the action is visible from the front, not the back. It's a little ironic because I, I think you could almost argue that a display back is not really that necessary for this particular movement because the most dynamic part of a mechanical movement is always the balance wheels and you can see these balance wheels right from the front. So that's the most attention grabbing aspect of the watch, I would say. But because they've dedicated so much of the real estate on the dial to these openings, this is sometimes called an open heart design, it forces uh, another aspect for the remainder of the dial that I do enjoy, and that's the asymmetry of the dial. Meaning, because of this open heart section down here, you can see that we only have our indicators from 9 to 3. There are no hour indicators in the bottom of the dial at all. I really like that. I like the, uh, the asymmetry of it. I also like this kind of graceful curve and this two level effect that you see in the dial. You can see a, a top layer that is the shiniest part up through here. 
And then there's this split level. You can see it in the window for the power reserve indicator, and you can see it down here through the open heart area. There's a definite, there's a thickness change here. There's like, it's like the dial is made up of two layers of material. And you can see each of them in different parts of the dial. And I'm speaking of this lower layer, and this is a part that would probably be overlooked by most, but I'm a big, big fan of this gradually spiraled pattern that you can see in the bottom of the dial here and in the power reserve window. You can see that it spirals out from the center of the dial, but you can only see it in these two areas. I think, I think it's a raised pattern, you know, like a bumpy kind of a pattern. I think there's, there's physical relief in this pattern. But what I like the best about it is that it, to me, is very reminiscent of the types of designs that were engraved uh, as decoration, purely cosmetic, into the old pocket watch movements, uh, you know, around the turn of the century and into the early 1900s. Watch companies were very competitive with each other about their the decorative aspect of the flat plates of their of their movements, which was which I felt was always a little ironic, since in most cases you never see the uh, backs of those movements in regular use. And I wanted to um, show an example of that. And I looked at all of the pocket watches that I have that have that uh, kind of a pattern engraved in the back. And the one that has the best example that is the most reminiscent of this Yod design is the one from the, the 1905. So I'm going to open this so we can set them side by side. Let's take a let's take a look at it first before we set it down. You may remember this movement, the 17 jewel bun. We'll get it in the, get it reflecting the light here. But today, what we're trying to show off is this wavy pattern. This one emanates from the center of the movement as well. This is engraved into the surface of the movement plates by a, a very special lathe. In the, in the American um, watch trade, this uh, process was called damaskining. And I have this on a handful of antique pocket watches, and the pattern is different on every one of them. But this one is the one I thought of when I first saw this pattern on the dial of the meridian. Let's see if we can get the light right on both movements at once. Now, I don't know if um, 
I don't know if the Yod designers had that in mind when they were thinking about how to design the bottom layer of that dial. If not, it's an amazing coincidence. But if so, it's a great homage to um, I don't know the the, the beginnings of uh, American horology. It's like a little Easter egg for those of us who know what the what the old movements used to look like. In fact, I suppose. This video would not be complete without giving the uh, bun a few wines and watch the uh, watch the three balance wheels running together. Look at that. Oh, there's a there's a mess of balance wheels. One from nineteen oh five and a couple from two thousand eighteen. Thanks very much to the folks at Yod for letting me host this contest. Please, again, check out the link in the description. I know we're a small channel, but it would be fun if we got a, uh, a lot of... Uh, a lot of entries in that contest. I hope you've enjoyed this little comparative show and tell today. I know we got a little bit nerdy on the uh, on the wood and the metal but like I said before we like what we like right thanks for being with me today friends See you again very soon.